Welcome to Darker Side of Music Interviews, podcast edition. In today's episode, we have with us Caitlin Stokes and Brandon Ashley, otherwise known as the band Corlix. Welcome to you both. Right, would you like to introduce yourselves? Right, I'm Caitlin from Corlix. And I'm Brandon from Corlix, uh, and I play guitar. Yeah, I am a singer, and we both produce here in this lovely studio. Yeah, live. that's where everything is made. The magic. <laughs> and it works well. It does. Thank it you. Does Thank well. you. We also work with other clients, too. We do. We're just all day in here making music for someone. Oh, wow. I didn't realize you work for other other bands and yeah. artists as well. We do. Actually, we produce tons of artists. Yeah, and uh, he also mixes and masters, so it's a one-stop shop. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they get really the old good. package in here. <laughs> <laughs> well, some people just come for us for mastering or mixing or producing, or sometimes it's all three. So yeah. it is nice to be able to take really young artists and just they send us their demos and then we can really bring them to life. And I have like the most fun doing that with uh, young up and coming artists. And they're just so excited and grateful to work with us. And oh, that's just like the best feeling. Yeah. Yeah. It's lovely. Also um, we think that way back in the day when we first started off with music, which was kind of a long time ago now, but uh, we just kind of wished that to find like some other artists that it was like ahead of us and would have just, you know, started working with us on production and, like, giving us tips on, like, you know, how to really channel our own careers and blah, 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 you know. And so we kind of do it also because we feel like it's the right thing to do for the music scene as well. Yeah, yeah, we give back a little bit. That's that's a nice way of doing it. So rather than carrying on, I'm just saying, what was it like then, both being producers, what was it like working with Chris Harms? He's oh, also a producer, um, so I mean that makes it. Yeah, does that make like, it a conflict in a way? No, no, no. Really, it was great, and he's such a great professional. Yeah, know, so. first of all, super professional. You know, we work with all types of people, and you can really tell when you're dealing with someone who's just been doing this for years and is absolutely professional, and everything they send you is perfect. It's like everything was just very smooth. Very everything smooth. just like. Yeah. came to like you know a finish a final a final product very very quickly yeah and uh yes there was a little bit of back and forth uh, about parts uh, and everything but uh once everything was just laid down you know it just went super super smooth so that was amazing actually yeah and um um yeah just a real pleasure super easy actually <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah really easy. one can, of the easiest. I can imagine <laughs> yeah. him being a really nice guy and very easy to get on with. Yeah, but he is definitely like a perfectionist. Like I could tell, and so it was just like, okay, we really have to like do our best here, and um, you know, <laughs> to get someone like him happy who's working in the best studios in the world. So we were like, all right, we better make this sound amazing. So. Um, Hopefully we did. Yeah, I think he was, he was happy. We're happy. It was happy. And yeah. we've gotten so many, uh, we, just everything blew up after that collab came out. Like our Spotify went crazy. Our monthly listeners went crazy. And um, that didn't necessarily happen for everyone that collaborated with him. So we're just patting ourselves on the back for that one. Majorly patting, yeah. <laughs> but you are both, both actually really, really good. So... I mean, that probably does help a lot, doesn't it? The fact that you two are good as Thank yourselves, you. as Corlix, and there's obviously the dark as well. I mean, it's just... Thank you. Yeah, that's welcome. I mean, it is really good music. And I was kind of astounded the first time I heard Corlix. I thought, wow. And I thought, I recognise that guy from somewhere. And I didn't realise you were... <laughs> 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 then I saw the name of the I know. <laughs> yeah. But no, very, very good music. I love it. Thank you. Thanks. How did you guys get together then for this? How did you meet up? Uh, well, we met in LA at like a dirty rock bar. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, you know, just being young and dumb in LA, uh, partying all the time. Yeah. Um, and then we just started doing music together a little bit. At first, it was kind of like, oh, this is silly. Let's do this uh, to pass the time kind of a thing. 
And then like some real like magical things started happening. And then we just, when we left uh, America and we were just like, things started picking up more and more. And yeah, I mean, it just got more and more serious probably the last like four years. It's pretty much when we moved to Berlin, actually, that when yeah. we started really working on uh, uh, Coralix uh, as an idea of sound, also an aesthetic. And yeah, we went through like different phases yeah. and, uh, you know, a couple of different sound choices on the way. But uh, that's where really like yeah. we formed uh, our taste and refined uh, what we really wanted to to do with Coralix. Yeah. Oh, that's good. And what about the name? Where did that come from? It was a dream I had when I was, like, 13. Uh, it's just, like, I tell this story all the time because people are just like, wait, what? <laughs> uh, but, yeah, it was just, like, dreaming about myself performing in front of, like, my future self performing on a big stage. And then, like, my little kid self was like, wow, this is so cool, like, what, how'd you do this? And then my dream self just said, don't worry. All you got to do is remember the name of your band. And it's Coralix. <laughs> and she started like spelling it to me in the dream. She was like, C-O-R-L-Y-X. And she's just like repeating it and repeating it. And I literally like woke up from the dream, like spelling this word. And I was like, whoa, that was weird. So I wrote it down just like in the morning and kind of forgot about it and just like I was in a lot of other bands uh, in my early 20s and I never used the name um and then when we met and started making music together uh I was like hey what do you think about this I don't know name Coralix like it's I was like, what was that? And so I told him about the story. And then he was like, oh, absolutely. That's the name. That's going to be It just felt name. very powerful the way that it all happened. But yeah. So it's one of those, like, create your own destiny. Of, did I see the future? I don't know. But did I create the future that I saw? Yes. <laughs> That's a good thing. That's a good thing. And where, have you both been always wanting to be into music? Yeah. yeah. You have. Well, Definitely. From- from young I, ages. Well, he's been in bands. I but... started off when I was 16 in yeah. my first band. So wow. I've been literally making music uh, and playing in bands and touring since that. So. Yeah, but he's done like amazing things. He's opened for Iron Maiden and his last band, like gone on yeah. tour with uh, you name it, like everyone. And mm-hmm. like um, under his old, old project. Um, and then like for me, I play guitar and piano just like was kind of in and out of these little like joke bands like nothing we never even record recorded a song hardly i worked with like a few producers but nothing ever happened for me because uh, i was working full time as a nurse and um i just didn't have time to do music really it was always just like oh my hobby is music so um, I never really even uh, did something like relevant until until Corlys. Well, the fact is, uh, when I first uh, heard Caitlin singing, uh, we went to this party in LA, this like house party, and uh, oh yeah, uh, they started doing like a little karaoke, and Steven Tyler from Aerosmith uh, and another bunch of rockers were there as well. It was yeah. a great house party. Uh, I used to roll like that, okay, in L.A. I was, like, pretty <laughs> fucking cool. <laughs> and so um, they started doing, like, this karaoke, and yeah. uh, uh, Kaylin uh, starts singing People Are Strange uh, by the Doors. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I hear her singing. I'm like, wow, what a voice. Uh, you know? And then I'm like, well, we got to do something with that. Yeah. <laughs> Wow. Because when we met, I wasn't like, oh, I'm a singer. I was like, I'm a nurse. <laughs> you know, so oh, okay. <laughs> it was kind of like, it wasn't like that when we met. It was like, I mean, oh, I'm were, a nurse, you you're were a rock clear, star. She was clearly into music. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, I had no idea she was a singer, actually. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Now, that's something I would love to hear. People are strong <laughs> by the doors. Yeah, I mean, that would be Oh, brilliant. yeah, I should cover it. <laughs> yeah, you should really cover that. I mean, it's a great song anyway. Oh, it is, yeah. Oh, I, I think, like, any blues song is just, like, so nice for female vocals in general. I think it's, like, lovely. 
Yeah, and I think it's nice when you hear a song that's been nearly always sung by a male when it's sung by a female. Yeah, I love to do that. I yeah. always do that with my covers. I actually prefer to sing uh, covers originally done by men because then it, it's just different when a woman sings. And so I, I think that's fun. That's cool. Yeah, I agree with that. I think that's... Plus, like, if you're covering another woman, you're always going to get compared to her. You know, yeah. like, all these girls try to, like, sing Mariah Carey songs or, like, Whitney Houston <laughs> or, like, Susie. And it's just, like, you're going to compare both them together. It's only human nature to do that. So I don't like that energy. I don't want to be compared to another singer. I want to do my own thing. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's... That sounds about right, doesn't it, really? I mean, it's the, it's yeah, the way to be. I, it's always those yeah. comparisons. It's like, oh, he sounds like so-and-so. He sounds like this. He sounds like that. She sounds like... And it's always, yeah. oh, I like the original better. Or I like this better. But when you yeah. do it something completely upside down, right. people can't compare that. Then it, it, it no, takes really that like, away from them. <laughs> exactly. This is just a completely different song, yeah. like a, a new rendition. And yeah, exactly. I'm I'm very much all about that with covers brilliant and what what about your musical influences when you come into writing music wise what were your just all over the place both of us we're we're way too all over the place yeah we love so many different like (laughs) we literally like listen to reggae and then we switch to metal and then we go to hip-hop and then post-punk like we we got so many different interests in music that (laughs) <laughs> it's hard it's really hard actually for us to keep it kind of like consistent uh, consistent meaning like in a bucket because the industry and fans also they tend to put you in a bucket because mm. i understand that it makes it easier yeah, on their true. end either to market you if they're like a record label or to compare you to other favorite artists uh, yeah. if you're a fan and with us uh, um i feel like um, so many different influences uh, they can find in our music. Uh, sometimes it can make it a little confusing. Yeah, and <laughs> yeah. I feel bad for people trying to be like, like, find our label. Like, who are we? And even like press and and everybody. I'm like, oh, I'm sorry. Like, we're dark wave influenced. We're yeah. like a little bit post punk influenced. Like, I can't say that that's what we are because it's it's not. It doesn't. Yeah. But, but um, you know, it's not the smartest thing to do. I wouldn't <laughs> recommend it for other bands to just, like, do your own thing. Absolutely not. Please choose a genre. Stay Pick in a genre, genre and you're going to be huge. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> do what you're supposed to do. Um, but it is fun and, like, you know... We we love to just like pull from the eighties. We love to pull from the nineties. I guess there's lots of dark disco influences yeah. in this record, and that's probably the main influence. But then we got this very uh, post punk guitar, so right. And um, yeah, yeah, it's a, you know, it's it's a, it's a lot. I mean, I like <laughs> I like that style because you, I often get when I get sent things it says for fans of, and they name these yeah. groups that you and you think. There's nothing like it. Why have you said that? You know, don't, <laughs> don't, don't put that in my head straight away because I'm going to start yeah. comparing, you know. Yeah. And I think yeah, when I got yours, it was yeah. just, this is Caitlin and Brandon and here we go. And it was like, yeah. wow, I like this. You you decide what it is. Yeah. <laughs> We're yeah. not going to tell you. <laughs> and I hate. It's alternative. Yeah, that's it. it that's that's it. what it is. I mean, that was the whole idea of alternative punk kind of thing. It was do what you want and how you want. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that's yeah, a great thing. I know. You know, it's just human nature to want to like label things. And yeah. and I get that. Like I'm, I'm actually have respect for bands that can really hone in on a genre and just be like, this is our jo- genre. This is our thing. Like, I think that's great. And they often do really well if they're good songwriters. So, um, um, but for us, like, we'll maybe do a couple songs that mimic a genre, but then like the rest of the songs on the record are going to go in a completely different direction because we got bored and we wanted to do something else. Yeah. I mean, yeah, for sure. 
it's all under the yeah. same uh, umbrella of yeah. dark music. Dark okay, so music, like we're never gonna be making a, a song in major. We're never gonna be making yeah. a happy song. Or, no. You know, <laughs> those are things that you cannot expect from us. Definitely, yeah. <laughs> I will will never like come out with like a country album or you know something. Yeah. <laughs> well, never say never. There is dark was, country. So I was dark waiting. country <laughs> definitely appreciate that. I was like waiting for Brandon to say, dark, "Damn, dark <laughs> yeah." <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, but that's good. That's good. I love, I love it when a band like yourselves just do what you want and enjoy what you're doing. Oh, we definitely do. Yeah. Well, yeah. we appreciate you saying that because I get discouraged sometimes because I, I even hear, you know, I have friends that are like, "No, I only listen to post punk." Like, if you're not me, I'd like. That, like they are just like fans of a uh, genre and like that's it and see he comes across that a lot with the dark it's like do we book them with metal bands are you guys metal like are you metal and it's like well sometimes they are but it's also dark rock so but at the same time i see that in general is a great thing because if you take a band like corley so we can play at the goth club yeah but then if they call us to play like i don't know a like coachella we are alternative dark but we have an aesthetic that we can fit in also in a situation like that yeah now if you send corley to play with a mat at a metal festival it ain't gonna happen no but, no <laughs> you know the fact also like having a kind of an you know, open genre like we do, it gives us opportunity actually to be crossing over different uh, platforms. So, so yeah. I see that as a very enjoyable thing. Yeah, it's better than being put in a little slot somewhere and that's where you've got to stay. I don't yeah. know. Exactly. Yeah. Because then that's where you are expected to yeah. be for the rest of your life. Yeah, yeah you it. can't change. And you try to do anything different, uh, and people will not like it just because they see you, that you're only that thing, yeah. Yeah. you know? Yeah, and they will so. just drop you straight away. Right, exactly. right, right. But exactly. if you, as, but as you've started out as something that can be changing and fluent, uh, fluid, sorry, I think that can continue because your fans have obviously, they know you as fluid. Yeah. Exactly. We've attracted people who listen to all types of different music. Yeah. So that's like our fans are people who are like, yeah, I like post punk. I like dark wave. I like synth pop. I like metal. So, you know, yeah, we, yeah. we've attracted that. Yeah. 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 <laughs> that's good. That's a great way of doing it for sure. Yeah. How does your creative process work with both of you then? Is it one does the music, one does the lyrics, or are you just both? there kind of thing well she is uh, absolutely the master of uh, lyrics uh, and uh, melodies <laughs> there's no person i've ever worked with that is better than her at that wow. <laughs> so, well thank you said so that is very very easy actually we just sit down and we just like get started either like you know she records ideas on her phone and then she's just like, ah, oh, I just got this idea. I recorded it on my phone. You know, yeah. let's work on it. You know, yeah, yeah. and then it just starts like that. And or we'll it. just sit down with the DAW and like start off with the baseline straight. Baseline, yeah. You know, and and he's great at writing awesome baselines. Thanks. And then <laughs> and then I'll pick up the guitar and write like little guitar parts. But then he'll track the guitars. Yeah. Or vice versa, he writes the guitars as well. Whoever's got an idea, exactly. it's going to get recorded. Yeah. There's yeah. really like not a separation of like, you do this and I do that. And again, like, you know, even though our way of working is just very fluid. So. Yeah, it's fluid. <laughs> yeah. I know, I can see that, that you get on really well. <laughs> uh, that really does show that, that you get on really well. Uh, which is, thank you. Yeah, it's good. What about tours? Are you going to do tours? Uh, well, we did, um, so 2023, uh, we've got two shows booked in Germany. Um, and we just finished up a show in America. We've been kind of only doing like select dates for like good, uh, festivals or good opening slots, um, without making a whole tour out of it because, um, I'm still seeing a lot of drama <laughs> with bands and like tours and everything is still to me like very risky. 
Um, so lots of shows are getting canceled. Yeah, I mean, you've seen, like- I'm sure. So I'm just keeping it right now to okay. We're gonna play a couple shows next year, probably like eight total, but they're gonna be spread out. I have two dates up already. If people want to check that out, um, we're doing um. Plaga Noir Festival, and then we're opening for Unzucht in Hamon. So, um, and that's in April, at the end of April. So then, yeah, maybe I'll throw a couple more on in the summer. Um, but I'll just like update our socials about that. But yeah, nothing like nothing crazy no. for next year because I'm still just like putting my feelers out. The last thing I want to do is plan a tour and then have something happen. So, <laughs> yeah, is this the like the last bits of the COVID still? Yeah, people things? are still. Well, there's so many reasons. Like all of our fellow, no matter like what level they seem to be at, are just having so much drama with ticket sales and cancellations and band members getting sick. And I think a lot of people are just really hurting financially still because of. Yeah recessions everywhere and there's also a thing that like the cost for gas and transportation yes, everything just raised it but then yeah. uh, the income or like the split that you get from venues actually got lower right so really? as as in like you know not everywhere but like most places well, it did because also venues uh, have to pay more for example for energy right yeah you know so now the venue so fees went up it, it, prices went up for everyone Except but, for bands. <laughs> you know, the split got lower somehow because yeah. nobody can afford it, not even venues. And so it, it is it is sort of complicated. There's going to be maybe like shows, uh, they're going to be better. Other ones are going to be like not as good. In the end, everything has to have man- make sense also financially. It needs to be like somehow like sustainable. Yeah. yeah. And so uh, this year, things are still a little complicated, like you're yeah. saying, like, you know, we're just getting out of COVID right now. Yeah. So hopefully in like 2024, things uh, are yeah. going to be like more adjusted to like, you know, some sort of like stability that people can start making plans, uh, you know. Or like, not. I mean, that. I've seen like doom and gloom posts from, for instance, from like Aesthetic Perfection. They're like, this is it. We're not doing another headlining tour ever again. Like, here's all the reasons why. Um, another reason they think is like Gen Z isn't so interested in going to shows as much as like everyone was 10 years ago. And like, um, there's just a lot of different cogs in the wheel yeah. that are kind of messing with bands right now. So, um, I'm also though, I don't have this crazy desire to like be on the road for a month. No. That's never been like my idea of like what I want to do. I do. He's yeah. Fine. I was going to say Brandon does. Yeah. I, He's, <laughs> me with Coral. I, like, I need that. Like yeah. yeah. So the dark can like sleep in a van and like be on tour for a month. I don't care. I'm not doing that. <laughs> Well, that's a good I job he's got to be dark. on the road. Uh, I not always, not all the time, because I love working at the studio as well and doing production and mixing. So I just kind of need those two parts in my life uh, that sometimes I'm just like taking off uh, and, um, you know, yeah, experiencing yeah. the grime of life. <laughs> so both bands will have like very different schedules as far as like how we approach things. Um, like I might do like maybe a week in Germany opening for someone really awesome, maybe on our label. Um, I could do something like that, but I don't really see it getting more crazy than that. I don't know. Maybe I'm going to be eating my words in two years, but. (laughs) (laughs) But at least at the moment, that seems to work well for you both. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's working great. I'm like, we managed to make a little bit of money and you know, the rest, like I can do so much promo online. I love making content. I love making videos. I love taking photos. I, we do everything ourselves. So we're not spending money on that. And so, um, it just like, I feel like I can do a lot online versus like playing in a pub for 50 people night after night after night on some 
crazy tour. Well, I doubt that Corlix will be put on a tour plane in a pub in front of 50 people. Well, but, you know, yeah. you never know. Sometimes that happens. I would certainly hope not. <laughs> no, I, I, I honestly don't see that happening. We've around. done it before. Yeah, Have years, you? And years, years and ago, years ago. Like, <laughs> that's when I was like, no more fucking pub gigs. <laughs> Well, all you need to do is, if if that ever happened, just say, well, Jason's coming. He's going to be crazy. Just watch him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> He's nuts when he plays his guitar, oh, isn't he? Absolutely nuts. He's one of the best performers ever, period. Yeah, he's yeah. all in, isn't he? I mean, he's... <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Got the moves. Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah. Actually, I, I don't know if you want to check out, but, like, The Dark, the lineup right now, like, we're all front frontman you know what i mean like we're yeah. all it's an all-star band it's basically. an all-star band like i'm playing guitar he's the frontman he's like incredible then jason then kuro who's our guitarist who's in a, the frontman for another band who's just like just as crazy as jason and i don't know if you know him but <laughs> like, we're all like fucking losing our minds on stage before <laughs> like it's a show to see i have i have we're noticed. gonna come to dark malta and your guys are just gonna lose your minds i feel Fantastic. bad who's coming on after us <laughs> <laughs> i've seen like little clips and things and i just see it and i think what the hell they're, they're just so energetic <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I we're think, really having a good time you but must we're also be, all so fabulous you know everybody yeah. like we're just decked out <laughs> we're like showing skin like it is a show you say it's very kind of flamboyant yes very yeah. much so yeah, yeah it's yeah. proper it's a proper show isn't it as well as just not yeah, just music it's, like, it's a it's show like, it's like drag metal meets like yeah. Rocky Horror Picture Show. There's lots of like, glamour, the <laughs> lots of dark glamour mixed up with yes. rock and metal. metal. Yeah, yeah, it's it's there's nothing quite like it. And I've been going to shows my whole life. I've never seen anything <laughs> like the dark. I was going to say, light up now. I think you're pretty unique as the dark. I mean, you're unique as Corlix, but you're also unique as the dark. Yeah. Thank you. I really appreciate that. <laughs> it's, it's. I'm looking forward to seeing you guys on stage. I mean, that's going to be amazing to see that. We're going to have so much fun. Oh yeah, it's going to yeah. be so much fun. We're all going to be in our best outfits, just like slaying Absolutely. the stage. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's going to be so good. I'm sure of that. <laughs> What's next for you guys? I mean, going forward, are you seeing yourselves as staying as Corlix as well and keep going? Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, we'll we'll just be doing this forever, probably. Forever. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, forever brilliant. until we're 80 on stage with a... We're we do not intend room. to ever retire. No, no, <laughs> yeah. Because we've figured out a way to make music sustainable for us. I mean, we're not going to become millionaires, but, like, it's working with, like, what we do in the studio... We're able to make all of our music and ourselves video, and videos, and videos well. ourselves. Yeah. So any extra income that's starting to come from music, it's all um, profit, which is it's not a lot, but like it can it's paying the bills. Yeah. So we are now just able to do this. Um, yeah, full for time. Our living. And, and for, yeah. like that, like building that is so incredibly hard. And so we're just uh, like my advice to anyone trying to make music a career is to you, you're going to have to learn production. You're going to have to have your own studio, at least to produce your own music. You should also probably get a camera and get good at like taking photos yeah. and possibly music videos, because those are the things that really cost a lot of money and like bands, paying five to 10 K to make a music video. That's not sustainable, especially when you need three a year to like really promote it, a, a record. You know that maybe you're starting off uh, and very few people are going to watch the video because you have a small channel. Right. So, right. You, know, so you, you have to keep putting out stuff. So I just tell people, if you really are in this and you really want to make this a career, you're going to have to learn to do this stuff. Like that's the world we live in now. Mm. And then on top of that, <laughs> you also need to practice and rehearse and jam with people and learn how to perform live because that's the whole other part of it that is really important. <laughs> 
Yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah. And talking about continuing until you're old, I just interviewed, I don't know if you know, I UK Subs. What, what was the U, name? UK Subs. The UK old subs. Punk, the old punk band. It sounds band. familiar. It sounds familiar. Like it's like punk, yeah? Yeah, it was from yeah. the 70s and he's still going. Yeah. He's now I think wow. 79. Wow, Amazing. yeah, yeah. And okay. I want to be that guy. <laughs> yeah, and just just so to, just to please Brandon, he's already a 79 bear in mind. He's done up to 100 gigs this year already. <laughs> what a legend. <laughs> what a legend. <laughs> and he said that's called cutting down because he used to do 300 a year. Uh, wow. <laughs> I'll have what he's having. Yeah, and <laughs> I did say to him, how do you keep your energy? He said, just don't calm down on stage, still jump around. <laughs> yeah, just yeah. keep it going. Yeah. Yeah. yeah sure. I mean, gosh, some people are just built for it, you know, yeah. like, especially if you've been doing it your whole life. I think like, you know, you learn a few tricks on the road. Like when I'm on the road, I try to stay as healthy as possible. I don't really party a lot because then I'm hungover for the next show. And then it just starts to carry on and then I'm going to get sick. So also like I bring lots of pillows with me. I got the whole car like <laughs> full of pillows because like I need to be comfortable. You know, even if we're staying in like random hotels, they never have enough pillows. I have to bring the pillows. <laughs> is that so true, like is it? That. Half of the space in the car is taken by gear and then the other half is the pillows that she brings along. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> and like my fruit and veggies got to stay like healthy, hydrated. I need uh, like, yeah. And Brandon, what do you take with you? Um, to be <laughs> honest, uh, but to be honest, I'm, easy, the, easy. I'm the kind of guy that could keep going on like bourbon and McDonald's <laughs> for the entire time with the tour. Like I, I don't have particular issues. I mean, uh, I got a little sick when I got back from America and then I performed the, the show afterwards in the UK with the dark uh, that I was kind of sick. But, you know, that kind of stuff can happen and happens all yeah. the time on the road. Now, I don't like to party much when I go on tour because I got to save my energy and especially, you yeah. know, if, you know, I'm singing or playing guitar. It's the same thing. Like I, but on a day off, I'm definitely gonna, I'm gonna have some fun. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's what life is Not about. Me. I'm like... <laughs> I've got the cucumbers on my eyes. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> and totally pillows. different styles. <laughs> but we make it work. We and totally make it work. That's, yeah. that's, that's brilliant. <laughs> Would you guys like to mention anything else that maybe I've forgotten, which I probably have? Well, hopefully, uh, I don't know when this interview is coming out, but Blood in the Disco is literally about to drop. Oh, exactly. We're so excited about it. It's happening. Yeah, it's like uh, almost, yeah, about, about a week away. Yeah. Um, so maybe by the time this comes oh. out, it will be out. Um, and this is definitely our finest work. It is. It is. Uh, it's We're so proud. So many different types. It's like listening to a Spotify playlist. <laughs> That's what I've been saying because it really, it's got lots of different genres. But each song we really approached with like so much care and thought. You know, it wasn't like, oh, let's throw in a couple. There's only good songs on the album. Like, I, each song, I'm just like, it's so special. And so, um, yeah. really proud of it. this record. Looking forward to it. It'll that. be our first one with Out of Line. And they did also, I did a bunch of photo and graphic design for the album artwork. But then they did like a really nice layout for the actual physicals. It looks amazing. Yeah. Wow. Which, I highly recommend everyone to get a copy. yeah i mean you it just looks great and um so we're super excited about that and then yeah come see us at plaga noir festival up in germany if you want to attend and it's beautiful it's like on the baltic it's on the baltic sea basically yeah like a really wow. interesting location yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah and it's going to be a great lineup as well i think yeah. that festival is going to be lots of fun yeah, yeah. That sounds good. It does sound good. And then the dark will see you in Dark Malta. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Yes. We'll, we'll just party by the pool. Oh, we're, we're going to be by the pool. So come find us by we're, the pool. We're definitely going to be by the pool. I have an obsession for pools, actually. Yeah. I, I don't know where a big as soon, as soon as I saw there was going to be a rooftop pool, I'm just like, yeah, we're like yeah, you're just going to find me there like all the time. Honestly, it's been an absolute pleasure meeting you two. 
Likewise. Yeah, you're such a happy man. You're so happy, and it's just you're, <laughs> yeah. you're fun, happy. That's just brilliant. Thank you to Caitlin and Brandon. That was our interview with Corlix. It was supposed to be a video interview, and it was very entertaining. But due to a technical issue, we cannot bring you the video, sadly. Please do not forget to subscribe to our podcast, or at least sign up at darkersideofmusic.com to our newsletter that will let you know when new interviews, reviews, new releases, etc. are available. Thank you for listening, and please do get in touch if you have any ideas. This has been Darker Side of Music Interviews, podcast edition. Bye for now.